Let's but let's let's just jump right in. I, I, I mentioned that we're seeing a spike in COVID-19 cases around the world, but we're also seeing it in the NBA with upwards of 80 players testing into the COVID protocols with Christmas Day rapidly approaching. So are there any plans right now to stop or pause the season to allow for the spread to slow? No plans right now to pause the season. We've, of course, looked at all the options, but frankly, um, we're having trouble coming up with what the logic would be behind pausing right now as we look through these cases, literally ripping through the country right now, putting aside the rest of the world. Um, I think we're finding ourselves where we sort of knew we were going to get to for the past several months, and that is that this virus will not be eradicated, and we're going to have to learn to live with it. And I think that's what we're experiencing in the league right now. Well, so to be clear, with Christmas Day approaching, there are no plans to pause or delay those games. But are, are there any contingency plans that are being put into place now? We would need to talk for a few hours to talk about the contingencies. So, yes, I mean, I would say beginning from the day we initially shut down the league, you know, in, in March of 2020, we've done nothing but look at contingencies. So, of course, we always have those, but at least as of now, um, our plan is to move forward, um, not just for the Christmas Day games, but there are another roughly 23 games scheduled um, between now and Christmas. And, you know, every day is a new day. You know, we, we get the overnight testing. We look where we are in terms of our rosters and make our decisions. But at, at least, as I said, um, it seems for us that the right and responsible thing to do, taking all the factors into consideration, is to continue to play. So, uh, right and responsible thing to do, why is it then that there's a delay in waiting to test players every day until after Christmas uh, and not starting that more immediately to stop or that spread? Well, it's, it's, it's only that we're shifting to a different protocol post-Christmas, and that plan had been in place for several weeks. I mean, I think same with the rest of the country. I, I think I recently heard something like a, a third of the country um, travels for the holiday break, that when you have additional um, travel, when you have families getting together, it requires us upping our testing beyond the already enormous amount of testing we're doing. So that's what we'll be beginning post-Christmas. But right now, I mean, I'd say I, we're doing an enormous amount of testing. I, I, I think it's doubtful there are many organizations, frankly, anywhere that do more testing than we and the other leagues do. I think we're, we're at the point, and you mentioned that the world has changed. I think that we're at the point now, right, where we have vaccines, where we have booster shots, but we're still seeing people who are boosted, who have been vaccinated, test positive for COVID-19. So is there any thought to, or have you guys discussed at all, having asymptomatic players who have COVID-19 be able to play through that, or similarly to what we saw in the NFL, be able to test out faster? Yeah, well, well, let me just say, I mean, we have a, a lot of data we look at in terms of players and coaches that have gone through the three-shot protocol, meaning the two mRNA shots and then a booster, and then past two weeks, only a very small number of those people have then been breakthrough cases where they've turned positive, and they essentially have been asymptomatic or very mild symptoms. We're, we're also dealing with a large group that either have one J, J shot or haven't been boosted yet. So I would just say to, you know, our community, really to everyone, at least based on the data the NBA has, the boosters are highly effective and we're strongly encouraging everyone to get them. And in fact, in our league right now, we're up, you know, we're around 97 percent vaccinated, but we're up to about 65 percent of our players have been boosted. And we're in active discussions with the Players Association to look for ways to get that number even higher. So we're not, you know, in, in terms of your question, whether in essence we can treat this as endemic and people begin to move on and we only test those who are symptomatic and deal with those, we're not quite there yet, but we're paying a lot of attention to what other leagues are doing. The NFL just came out with a new protocol. Of course, we talked to the other leagues. We're talking to lots of other organizations, lots of doctors and scientists to figure out what the right thing to do is. We, we do think there's an opportunity to potentially lead here. You know, as, as I said, we, we have the advantage that we have a highly vaccinated group. We're moving towards a group that, I mean, well above the national average in terms of boosters, but we'd like to get it way up into the 
90 percent, just like we have with vaccinated. And maybe we can demonstrate that there's a way that people can move forward, again, recognizing that this virus, unfortunately, isn't going anywhere and it's just going to become part of our lives for the foreseeable future. Well, because it's going to be part of our lives, sort of statistically speaking, I know that you said you're not there yet in terms of allowing players who are asymptomatic to play. But because there isn't ta- daily testing, I'm you know, getting alerts on my phone about the Toronto Raptors and their plane and having so many players test and awaiting other results. Isn't that already the case, that players are playing with asymptomatic COVID cases? So is there any thought to maybe measuring viral load or something like that to heighten the responsibility around playing with asymptomatic players? We, we always are measuring viral loads with our P- PCR test. That, that's part of the protocol. And so it's something, again, that it's, it's not just our doctors, but the medical communi- community is looking at one. I mean, I think they're already realizing that you can move away from the 10-day protocol when you have players who are vaccinated and boosted, that it seems that the virus runs through their systems faster. They become not just asymptomatic, but more importantly, they're not shedding the virus anymore. That's the real concern in terms of others. And so we are actively looking looking at shortening the amount of days that a player is out before um, he can return to the floor. When might we see that, the next steps of that, shortening the time that they're out? Because, you know, looking at Christmas Day, right, and the number of superstars that could potentially be out for that game, could we see that in effect by then? It's it's unclear. I, I, you know, I, we're comfortable with the protocols we're following right now as we move through the week. And as I said, I mean, the, there's no doubt those five Christmas Day games are important. But as you know, we play many games every day. And so, you know, this is an evolving science you know, we're, we're working with a, great, with a great team of doctors and scientists. We have a lot of data at our disposal. And at the same time, we, we talk regularly to the Players Association because first and foremost, we want to make sure we're being responsible and that our players are healthy and, and safe. And, and, they under, and they believe also in the system, that they know that um, they're being, t- they're being you know, overseen in a very responsible way. And, and as I said, everything we're doing is in partnership with the Players Association. Well, and at the end of the day, as we've heard, for instance, Sean Marks say, it's about, we're talking about basketball and we're talking about winning and that's what organizations are really focused on. So what worries do you have or potentially have you heard from other players or owners or executives around the league about the competitive integrity of games when you have one team that has signed a ton of players just to have enough bodies to be on the floor and another team that has more of their all-stars and closer to what their roster looked like when they envisioned this season? We've been dealing with this situation since March of 2020. And of course, the ultimate goal in this league is to win. But I think there's also a realization that in every season, there's only going to be one champion. I think there's a real sense of brotherhood in this, among the guys in this league. There's a sense of partnership among the teams. And as I said, I, I also think there's a broader responsibility. I mean, uh, sports have been a bellwether of sorts in our society. We were a bellwether when we shut down in March of 2020. A lot of people paid attention for the first time and took this virus seriously. And I think now, as we're dealing with the current situation, our ability to find a way to keep operating is also significant for society to show that um, there are ways, you know, despite um, living in this COVID era, that we can find a safe and responsible way to keep going. So I, I think there's a recognition that um, these are the cards that we've been dealt. Of course, there's a certain amount of unfairness that comes with playing in certain cases with a group of, you know, some teams where particular players are out because of COVID protocols. But the other advantage is we do have an 82-game season, and we have a long playoffs. And my sense is things will work out by the end of the season. Commissioner, I want to circle back to something you said a little bit earlier about uh, being in conversations with the Players Association. Have you revisited the idea of mandatory vaccines? We, we, no. I mean, it's something that we proposed. Um, It's something that the Players Association wouldn't agree to. Having said that, though, we're at roughly 97 percent of our players have been vaccinated. And so from my standpoint, I'd rather focus on the 97 percent than the 3 percent. And incidentally, many of the 3 percent now have gotten COVID. So, you know, they have developed antibodies. To me, the focus right now is on boosters for the 97 percent of players who have been vaccinated. As I said before, among 
those players who are eligible to get boosters, because as you know, there's a waiting period after your second shot. Yep. So, but among those who are eligible to get boosted, we're at something like 65%. And ideally, I'd like to see that number get to 97% as well. That's what we're focused on right now with the PA. I know that looking around the country, it's just now coming out that the majority of cases in the United States, because I do want to stress this isn't just the league. The league is a microcosm of what's going on in the world. But we're seeing that Omicron is the dominant variant. Is that the same in the NBA right now? Yes. I mean, it, and, and again, we're in the unique position where we can sequence every single positive case we, we get. And it's beyond dominant in the league right now. We're up probably around 90 percent of the cases right now that we're sequencing are Omicron. Mm. So before I let you go, Commissioner, considering the cases around the country, considering Christmas Day is coming, considering that is usually one of the most exciting times of the NBA calendar, we've seen crowds in Toronto, for example, be reduced. And that's something that is a government decision, not a team decision. But why should people feel safe right now going to games? I think people should feel safe going to games. I mean, first of all, it's, of course, an individual decision. I think it has a lot to do um, with following appropriate protocols, um, being vaccinated, getting boosted, wearing a mask, of course, makes a big difference. I mean, that's I, I think that those people under those situations should be comfortable living their lives. I mean, I public health officials will weigh in if there's a, a change in approach. But right now, under those conditions, people have been living their lives. I'm here in New York. Um, where it seemingly is the epicenter of, um, the, again, of the pandemic right now and of this particular variant. Um, restaurants remain full. Um, stores are full. People are preparing for the Christmas holidays. I mean, again, I recognize things could change, but, but right now, at least, if people take the pro proper precautions, I think people should feel comfortable going out. Thank you so much for taking the time today, Commissioner. I know these weren't necessarily easy questions to answer. I really appreciate you coming by and stopping on MBA today. Please stay healthy and have a wonderful holiday. You too, Malika. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's it for MBA today. I really appreciate everyone listening in to what the commissioner had to say. I want to stress, he said that vaccines work, that masking works, that testing works. And this is something that we will be continuing to monitor on NBA Today as this continues throughout the world, throughout society, and throughout our league. The 